Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. I think you could have just called it Furiosa. There's no other franchise that really looks like this, although having Mad Max in the title probably helps sell some tickets. This entry into the franchise is once again helmed by George Miller, a man who reminds you that if you ever feel bad about having multiple styles, this man directed both Happy Feet and Fury Road. Furiosa, as the title suggests, is a film all about Furiosa, her origin story, how she came to be, and serves as a prequel to Fury Road. And it's a film that's been in development since 2015. This film was supposed to be shot back to back with Fury Road since George Miller just had this idea for what this character is, where she's come from. However, money and studios came into the fold and just kind of got this one pushed so far down the pipeline. And now it's finally here. Now let's be real for a minute, let's pump the brakes. Who asked for this movie? Was anyone really clamoring for a Furiosa spin-off film? I'll be straight up, when it was announced, I didn't really care for it, I wasn't that excited. It felt like it was the beginning of everything that Disney had done with the Star Wars franchise circa 2017 onward of we're gonna do some spin-offs and then we're gonna eventually put some TV shows out and everything to capitalize off of the greatness that was Fury Road. And in Star Wars, you know, it was the original trilogy and just how much money those movies made when they come in waves of trilogies. Anyway, you get the point. Story for another day. But thankfully, this was awesome. This was fantastic. While Furiosa was played by Charlize Theron in Fury Road, here she's played by Anya Taylor-Joy and Alila Brown, which I've got to give her some praise. This film, almost half of it is Alila Brown playing Furiosa. And I'm not seeing anyone give this chick enough praise. It's incredible because if you don't buy into everything with her in the first third half of this film, the rest of the movie falls apart. You've got to acknowledge a great child actor when you see him. But Anya Taylor-Joy, she had some huge shoes to fill and she pulls it off. She does a good job. Chris Hemsworth is another standout. He is having an absolute ball with this. And I'm in a really, really weird place with this character because... I think it's the best performance I've ever seen from Chris Hemsworth in any movie, but at the same time, a lot of what he does is what doesn't work for me. I suppose I think he could have been an even nastier villain than he was. I don't think the fake nose was needed. It, you can see half the time that it's a prosthetic and you know, everyone knows what Chris Hemsworth looks like. As well as the accent he puts on, it just feels like a little too much, but at the same time, this world is crazy and full of some of the most crazy characters I've ever seen. So is it really that far-fetched? Not really. I suppose I just had different ideas about what this character could have been and how it could have been even better to me. That doesn't mean it would have actually been, but it's what I would have liked to have seen. A little bit more of a serious villain because some of the things he does are horrible and dastardly in the film. It's... they're good. Well, they're bad. But they could have been portrayed in a more scary way. For me, I need a villain that can be a Morton Joe and be scarier at times when he needs to be, not someone that I buy everyone supporting this guy that's acting a bit like a clown half the time. It was taking me out of the experience, which I hate to admit, but it was. And yes, eventually it won me over, so I'm, I'm fine with it. Once we got some more serious stuff out of the character, rather than holding face, that's when I started to really enjoy it even more. This movie slows down a lot compared to Fury Road, but I would never say that I was bored during the runtime. It's very different in the way that Fury Road was loud spectacle and non-stop action. This one uses its downtime to flesh out the story and characters even more. So it's a bit of, some people prefer this, some people prefer that. One just does one better than the other, and it's kind of pick your Pick your preference. Do you rather have some more story or would you rather have just a non-stop action flick? That downtime also helps to build up those bigger moments so that they hit harder. It's not a bad thing. It just might not be for everybody. I I'm not sure, you know, some people are going to prefer Fury Road, some people will prefer Furiosa. But talking about the set pieces, they're meant to be seen on the big screen. The visuals, the cinematography, the sound design in particular really stood out to me you have to experience it in a theater. Being at home, watching it on TV, doesn't do it justice. It's not the same thing. It just isn't. The sound design was so good. Like, I wasn't just hearing the bass of the rumbles of the cars, all right? They were going so mad that, like, my seat was shaking, and I felt like I was inside of the cars with them, about to go on the most crazy apocalyptic journey of my life. Because the scale is off the charts, all right? This is definitely 
another 4K demo disc, alright? This is when I say demo disc, I mean this is the one you put in to show off your sound system to see how good it is, or to show off visuals to see the clarity in your TV. It's another one of them, just like Fury Road. As far as complaints, I have a couple. It's not as focused as Fury Road was, where some of the criticisms for Fury Road can be that it is just so simple. The whole movie is basically one big car chase forward and back. Here, it doesn't know if it wants to commit entirely about being a story dedicated to Furiosa and maybe Dr. Dementis, uh, Chris Hemsworth Dr. Dementis, Chris Hemsworth God, that's tongue twister. Dr. Dementis, Chris Hemsworth's character and focus on them or it wants to, hey, here's some stuff from Fury Road. We want to actually just keep having some callbacks and throwbacks to that. But if it took place entirely at the Citadel and focused on the War Boys and just that whole area and how she grew up in that, I felt like it would have been more focused, or if it just focused on just Furiosa and her relationship with Dr. Dementis the entire time, that would have been an even better way of doing it. I just feel like you could have got a stronger film, because the film jumps all the time, it wants to do everything, and it's not a mess, it just wants to include so much in such a tight time frame. While all of its ideas are good, it doesn't feel like it's dedicated itself to one idea in particular. Another issue I had, and this one's a little harder to talk about because I'm avoiding spoilers here. Towards the end of the film, one of the final conflicts gets kind of montaged over instead of being fleshed right out, and it, the movie, I think, could have really benefited from showing a lot more of that because it then makes some of the later desperation feel even more earned and warranted. Like the very ending could have held more punch if you had seen some of the events leading up to it instead of them being montaged over. I have to be vague, but if you've seen the film, I think you know what I'm talking about. However, I see why it wasn't put in the film because it would have blown the runtime out to over three hours. And I felt it was kind of long enough as is, and it doesn't really whether you do show it or don't show it, add anything too much to the story. The beats would still follow the same way. The one thing that was more noticeable, for me in particular, was the amount of green screen that was used, the amount of keying. And it's not that there wasn't any green screen used in Fury Road, it's that it's just much more noticeable here. I don't know if it's, yeah, the way the keying is being done on it, or there's just much more use of it compared to a lot of the practical stuff that was done in Fury Road. It's not the worst thing in the world. I like mo I There's a ton of movies I like that are just CG galore. I reviewed Speed Racer and gave it a positive grade. Is anything real in that movie? I don't know. It doesn't always attribute to how great a film is or isn't, but considering the style of this franchise and the last film, it's something you are kind of there for. You are there for some of the crazy stunts and practical work that's done. And it's not that there isn't any, but it was just more noticeable this time around. Otherwise, despite some criticisms from me, I think this is an excellent film. It's an excellent prequel because what it does is just enhance Fury Road and make that an even better experience to watch since you know who Furiosa is now and what she's had to go through leading up to those moments. Furiosa, a Mad Max saga, for me, is definitely gonna get a rewatch. It is a eight out of 10, a very strong eight out of 10, almost a nine for me. I am, I'm harsh, I know, but it, it was really good. It's a really good movie, really good time. I definitely think you should see it in a theatre. But in terms of which one's better, yeah, personally, Fury Road, but it's tomatoes, tomatoes with it, you know? It, it depends. Do you want non-stop action? Would you rather have some more rich characters and story with your action? But the action's a bit more infrequent, you know? So... Up to you guys, I think you should make up your own minds. Go out and see it, please, because I really want to see what George Miller has in store for the sixth film in the franchise, Wastelands, where that's supposed to be a proper sequel to Fury Road with Furiosa and Mad Max both being in it again and interacting more. But whether they can get Charlize Theron and Tom Hardy to work together again, I don't know. We'll have to see. Money, money talks, or I'm sure we can make something happen. But please, go and see it. George Miller, I don't... At 79 is still killing it. He's 79 years old and he made this. This is incredible. So go and see it. I really want to see what he has in store next. As always guys, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. If you want to see more reviews like this or all sorts of the random sorts of types of videos I do, if we reach 1,000 subscribers, I will be pulling apart this entire shelf and doing a full Blu-ray collection video. I'll just talk about everything I've got briefly. So you can finally see what I've got now, because it's, it's getting obscene. If you've made it to the end of the video, you're a bloody legend, and hopefully, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.